Now you might be on your way to therapy. And you might be in different states. You might be in a state where you're preparing yourself to unload everything that you've been holding onto and you're just going to get in there and you're going to fully let yourself express yourself and, and, and uh, it's going to be a healing thing for you. Or you're going there telling yourself about what you're going to say and how you're going to say it and how you're going to represent yourself and and uh, you're going to be in, in full control and you're creating a story about how you're not crazy or how you're going to represent that you're just struggling and, and everything is fine or you're, you're, you could be fabricating a, a false story. What I recommend is that on your way to therapy, you are just focusing on your breathing. That's not say you're controlling your breathing, you're just focusing on it. You're, and as you focus on it, it will just go to its normal place. You know, Maybe to start focusing, you need to do a deep breath and then continue on from there. But if you just try, you'll figure it out. It's not rocket science. When you are in, the waiting room, sitting there preparing yourself to go in. You want to be 100% honest with yourself. Really be honest with yourself. But you also want to be your most controlled self. Because a therapist has a legal ob obligation to make sure that you and everyone around you is safe and not at risk of harm. So if you go into therapy and you fully unload straight away, you're putting your therapist in a legal position where they might have to take more control than you're willing to give. So you need to be able to represent whatever is the true, honest, version of yourself. If you don't have control, then show that you don't have control. But if you do have control, even though everything is, is out of control and, and, and to other people nothing makes sense and it's all very complicated and, and multifaceted and it's just you know what I'm saying. It's, you still want to be representing your most controlled self because the therapist is going to have, is going to be looking at you for signs that you have control and of, of what, what path of therapy is best to take. Now, if you are presenting symptoms of schizophrenia or psychosis, you will be put on medication. It's not an if, okay, you will be. Now, the mistake the first therapist that I went to for my voices and for my delusions, the first mistake she made was well, actually it was about the third mistake she made, but was to say within the first five minutes, I have to be on, uh, you have to be medicated. And I was not open to medication straight away. I was like, if I have to be medicated, I'll be medicated. But I, well, I want to try and not be medicated first. Can we at least try and not be medicated? No. If you're not going to be medicated, you can get out of my practice. The next therapist that I got and I was ringing around every day, really. I was ringing every day, therapist. And 
I didn't know that I should just go to my insurance company and walk through the front door of my insurance company and say, I need help in English and I would have gotten mental help. I did not know this. And I'd pushed everyone away apart from two people who they didn't know it either. They thought first I had to go and try and get help and get all these paperwork and stuff ready. So just because you ask other people for help, it does not mean that they know what to do either. So that's also taking into consideration. The next therapist I get to, he thankfully sits there and listens to me for the first 40 minutes. And I presented my most controlled version of myself, which was still very unstable. And still justifying all of my delusions and justifying all of my actions and justifying my whole thought process. And he very calmly sat there and then put his hands up and said, okay, we're approaching the end of the session now. And if you would like to continue therapy with me, I think that I can help you. But with the symptoms that you're showing me, I am required to suggest that you go on medication. He told me briefly his history of being a psychiatrist and now switched more to psychology. He was able to refer me to a psychiatrist who spoke English and I rang him while I was sitting there in the office to make an appointment. Once I had made the appointment to see the psychiatrist, he agreed to make another appointment for more psychology. I think what is most important to take away from this is that even if you initially do not agree with the findings of the psychologist or the psychiatrist, whatever system you are in, that is the system that is there. That is, at that particular moment in time, that is the best course of action for you to take. Now, later on, this might prove to be false, but at that time, at that moment, that is the best thing you can do, is to follow the advice of whatever professional you are in. Now, I've got stories that I can go into in other videos, but even when I look back on it, I'm like, okay, that didn't work out so well, but at that time, that was better than nothing. So, I need to take a breath. <laughs> to be continued.